Jackaro Toro here and on this channel I focus on Australian Aborigines, their languages, cultures, history eh, and so on. But in this video I would like to discuss the findings eh, of the two latest DNA studies performed with Australian Aborigines. Eh, there have been few uh, DNA studies performed and with few people taking part uh, earlier. The reason being that many Aborigines feel that they have bad experiences with uh, researchers. So uh, this center, the National Center for Indigenous Genomics, was started in 2016 in Canberra to help uh, with this. Uh, here the Aborigines themselves have ownership of collected uh, materials uh, and can say no uh, to uh, researchers who want to use uh, the materials. So now by this center uh, gene samples from 159 uh, Aborigines have been collected. 59 from the Tiwi Islands, just north of the North Australian coast. Uh, 38 from Elko Island, also known as Galiwingu. Uh, where Yulmo languages are spoken. Uh, this is east of the Tiwi Islands. Uh, 48 people at Yaraba uh, decided to take part. Yaraba is in northeastern Queensland uh, on the coast. Uh, and this could be called the Queensland equivalent of the Indian Territory uh, in the US. The Indian Territory to which the American government uh, moved big tribes that they wanted to get rid of uh, in their original uh, places, the original places where they came from. Uh, the Indian Territory, which eventually became the state of Oklahoma. Uh, Oklahoma meaning red people in Cherokee. Anyway, this was that sort of place because in 1938 there were 43 tribal groups uh, represented there. Uh, and 14 people in this central desert com community, Tijigala, uh, also took part in this study. So 159 people. Uh, two studies were performed and were published in the Nature uh, in December of 2023. One of them, Matthew Silcox et al. It is definitely an easier read than the other one. Uh, Andre L. M. Rice uh, et al., which is very dense, that has to be said. So in these two studies, what do they conclude? Well, they use a lot of statistical methods, uh, and I am not going to talk about details here. The one who is interested can check out the articles online. Uh, but they infer the following things. There was a population bottleneck, first of all, uh, 50 to 60,000 years ago. Uh, that is the out of Africa bottleneck, which is found all over the world uh, outside of Africa. Uh, and then Australians and Papuans uh, split from each other at around uh, 47,000 years ago. 
1636 or 1636 generations roughly is what they calculate uh, that the split that have passed since the split perhaps I should say so that gives us a number of 28 years per generation by the way yes and then for 12,000 years roughly there was one uh, Australian population where people married back and forth uh, and then different groups started to branch out uh, and to become uh, isolated from the general Australian uh, population. So of these four populations, as you can see, the Tiwis split off first, uh, and then the Yulngu people on Elko Island, uh, and the last ones to split off from the general Australian population were the ancestors of those at Tijigala uh, and Yaraba. But uh, it is noted that while these groups have not intermarried uh, with other Australian groups, not to any large extent anyway, since uh, these times, uh, there have been a gene flow uh, at different points in history uh, between these populations, all four of them, and Papuans. Yes. Uh, and when it comes to population size, we have the population bottleneck. Then there is an increase, a growth, in the population after that uh, in Australia until the late glacial maximum, which seems to have been hard, not just uh, in the northern hemisphere, but also in Australia, because there is a great reduction in population around that time. And after the late glacial maximum, we get a much smaller uh, but stable population. Uh, and in the last few hundred years, there is uh, a marked population decline, I would say unsurprisingly. But here, they note that they cannot see any effects of a population decline in this population here, only in the other three ones. Yes. So, for a long period, for a long period of time, uh, Australian Aborigines have lived in quite small groups that have not intermarried over long distances. They do have uh, the by far most complicated uh, kinship systems in the world, which I'm talking about in another series of videos. So, with these complicated kinship systems, uh, have they been able to avoid uh, dangerous inbreeding? Well, no. Uh, the reason being that we are talking about very long periods of time. Uh, perhaps people are familiar with the term sigosity. Uh, as you will know, I'm sure, uh, all people inherit half of their genomes, genome from their fathers and the other half from their mothers. Uh, homozygosity is a term used to describe that a person has identical genes or longer segments of chromosomes. Uh, inherited from the two different parents. Uh, in these studies it was found that the Tiwi population has a homozygosity of around 10 percent, which is three times 
that of Native American groups in the westernmost part of the Amazon rainforest in Peru, Native American groups that are believed to have been isolated for quite, long, quite a long uh, period of time. But uh, the time periods are, of course, much longer uh, in Australia. Uh, and 10% homozygosity is around 10 times of what we find in Eurasia. Uh, yes, by the way, it is also found in these studies that we have the largest amount of genetical variation uh, outside of Africa uh, in these four groups. But unique genes are usually only found in one of the four groups. But anyway, as I said, they have not been able to avoid uh, dangerous inbreeding because of the long uh, time scale. So this here is a neurodegenerative uh, disease, the Machado Joseph disease which is found in uh, around five of every 100,000 people uh, worldwide. But in the, the Northern Territory uh, communities here, it was found to be 100 times uh, more common. So 500 people out of every 100,000. Uh, and one of the conclusions in these articles is that more genetic studies are needed uh, on populations in different parts of Australia to find new uh, unique genes uh, and to figure out what inherited diseases there might be so that the Aborigines in question can get treatment. Yes, but I found this uh, all very interesting. But this is all for today. If you've made it this far, why not like this video uh, and consider subscribing? And why not sending it to someone who you think uh, might be interested in it? And I will be back. So, see you later.